I'm just going to read just one verse. Exodus chapter 17 in verse 10. Sorry, verse 11. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. And Moses' hands grew tired. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron and her held his hands up. One on, on, one on one side and the other on the other side. So that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. You may be seated. Moses... And the children of Israel had a challenge. Thank you, worship thing. Give him a hand. <laughs> I was testing their faith to see if they're going to stand there all day, but they... <laughs> Moses and the Israelites were faced with a challenge. And the challenge was that Amalekites came out to fight them. And so Moses commanded Joshua to get the men ready and go out and fight the Amalekites. And he said, I will go up on the hill and I will stay there as the Lord has commanded. As who has commanded? Who has commanded? The Lord. And so Moses went up on the mountain. And the Bible said, as they begin to fight, as they began to fight, that Moses held up his hands. And when Moses' hand became tired, the Amalekites started winning. In other words, his hand went down to his side and it started, and they started winning. They started to beat them out. And the Bible says that Aaron and Hur came and they started to lift his hand up and they started winning again. And Moses' hand became tired again and, and so he, he dropped his hand and, and they said, now no, 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 something's wrong. And, and they went and they took two stones and they held his hands up. And man, they fought and the Bible says that Joshua overcame the Amalekites by the sword. What's in this? We're, we're getting ready for 21 days of fasting. And what does this have to do with fasting? You see, my friends, Moses did something physical by lifting up his hands. The Bible states that whenever he lifted up his hand, they would start winning the battle against the Amalekites. Physical obedience brings spiritual release. Can I say that again? Physical obedience brings spiritual release. Our bodies determine if the battle is going to be won or not. So, you know, sometimes we get a church and, you know, we, we are told to raise our hands or we're asked to raise our hands and some people struggle with that. Let me remind you that physical obedience brings spiritual release. Everything in the modern church gets reduced to feelings. It gets to, well, I believe God and I feel it inside so I don't have to raise my hands. I have faith and I just believe so I don't have to do anything else. 
intellect prevails. The outward, man, there is no outward manifestation. But I'm here to tell you, my friends, that when we obey God in the physical, he will bring deliverance. He says, sometimes God demands of me, of all of us, physical obedience before spiritual release is rewarded. There is a connection between what we do physically that determines what happened to us spiritually. And fasting is one of those. That's why it's important that we fast physically, which is a physical action, which will bring physical and spiritual result. Fasting, my friends, is refraining from food for a spiritual purpose and also for a physical purpose. So if you want to lose some extras, just go and fast. But if you also want to give the devil a, a beating, you also need to go and fast, right? <laughs> Fasting has always been a normal part of a relationship with God. As expressed by the plea of David in Psalm 42, fasting brings us into a deeper, more intimate, and more powerful relationship with God. When we eliminate our food, or when we eliminate food from our diet for a number of days, your spirit becomes uncluttered, and you focus on what God wants you to do. And it is an amazing thing. Are you with me, church? I don't know if you have ever been on fasting where it hurts. Where you feel it in your belly and you want to give up. David was fasting. His hunger and thirst for God was, great, was greater than his natural desire for food. As a result, he reached a place where he would cry out from the depths of his spirit to the depths of God, even in the midst of a trial. Fasting is a secret source of power that is, that is overlooked by many. Amen, church? Are you with me, somebody? Are you with me, church? The Bible records... A certain person by the name of Daniel. The Bible says that in those days, Daniel chapter 10, I was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh or wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks are you with me church behold somebody said behold Daniel 10 verse 11 behold and ain't a hand touch me which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands let me back up a little bit Daniel, in verse 2, says, I was mourning three for three full weeks. That means he wasn't in a happy place. That means he was sad. Why was Daniel sad? What was going through or what was happening in Israel? The Bible state that Israel, as you know, they were in captivity. They were under bandage. They were under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar. And so Daniel decided that he was going to put aside and he was going to fast. And he says, behold, the hand of the Lord touched me or the, behold, the hand touched me and set me up on my knees and up on the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, O greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Wow. 
Daniel said, I stood trembling. He said, I ate no pleasant food or wine came into my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all till three full weeks. Oh, Daniel, greatly beloved. Oh, Daniel, greatly desired. There's a difference here, my friend. Look at it. Daniel desired no desired food. And then God said, oh, Daniel, greatly beloved. Oh, Daniel, greatly desired. And Daniel became a man who was greatly desired by God. There is a difference between God's love and God's favor. God's love is full. It's 100%. There is nothing you can do to, to God make you, to, for God to make you love you more. For God to love you more. There's nothing you can do for God to love you less. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more and more. You don't have to work for it. God love us. It's an everlasting love. But there is a difference between God's love and God's favor. God's favor is different because it's initially given to us as a gift. It increases in our life depending on our stewardship of what we are going to, of what we do to gain God's favor. The love of God is absolutely full and free. It's perfect love and it's full and it's yours. But the favor of God does not come in its fullness until you do certain thing that gets God's attention. Are you with me? You can't buy God's favor, but you do not get more of God's favor without sacrifice or the increase of favor comes from obedience and sacrifice. You know, in the, in, in the church, we don't talk about sacrifice and we don't talk about obedience a lot. And we don't talk about prayer and fasting a lot. You know why? Because it requires something. It requires us to do physically. It requires us to put aside some things. All right, so Daniel's story is a story of God's favor. He was feeling the weight and the destiny of his family, of his people, of his nation. And so desperate, he says, I will push away from the table that I ate no desirable food. Somebody say no desirable food. So he set aside what was desirable for a period of three weeks, 21 days, and he said, 21 days, I'm going to seek the Lord. The response of what he did is he ate vegetables, drink water. He did not say, what good does it do? He did not say, it doesn't matter. You know, it's like us coming to church. You know, God tell us to do something and we're like, I ain't going to do that. He said, knee down, and we say, I ain't going to do that. He said, wave your hand and praise. I ain't going to do that. What good does it do? It's all inside of me. I believe God, and it's all inside of me. So why do I have to raise my hand? Why do I have to pray? Why do I have to fast? Daniel didn't say that. He said, I am going to do, I am going to do something physical. I'm going to Put the Lord first. I'm going to give a pleasant food. I'm going to do this unto you. I'm going to eat no desirable food. And God said, oh, Daniel, you are desirable to me. It's right there. I, I didn't make it up. Read Daniel 10. It's right there. It says, oh, Daniel, you are beloved and you are so desirable to me. Fasting. Disconnect us from the world and prayer connect us back to God. Let me say this again. If fasting doesn't mean anything to you, then it doesn't mean anything to God. Let's read on. 
And Daniel, then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart out to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, the words were heard. I want you to listen to this. And I came for thy words. Said so the first from the first time you started, said so your words were heard. Have you ever been a part where you feel like, man, I'm praying and nothing is happening. And you stop. Because you get tired. I have no answer. I hear no answer. I, I, I don't know what's going on. But listen to this. The angel said, God heard you. Verse 13, but, somebody say but, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me one and twenty days. You, you don't understand that. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I, remain, and I remained there with the king of Persia. So he says, when you started praying, God heard you, but something, that, that, that king of Persia, that, that angel was, was holding up your prayer, and the answer was not coming because there was a war between the angels. And he said, Michael, you, you got to understand that the angels that are released, and he says, Michael, the archangel was released. And he says, now I'm come to make me understand that what shall befall the people in the latter days. What is he saying? That there are demonic forces that are stopping some things from happening. I didn't say it. It's, it's, it's right here. Verse 13, read it. And he said, Michael was dispatched. You're going to say there were three angels in heaven. There are three, but one got booted, and his name is Lucifer. But there's Michael. And there's Gabriel. <laughs> and when God dispatched one of those, it means there's trouble. So Michael is a war angel. You understand? He come to war for us. And, 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 and today we don't talk about angels in church. We don't worship them, but they are present because God is with us. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Come on, church. Praise the Lord. So when, when you are praying, don't, don't think that God is not hearing your prayer. God has dispatched an angel. And he says, when, when and, and verse 15 says, And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face towards the ground and I became dumb. Have you been in the presence of the Lord? Where you can't even move, and you can't even get up, and you can't even speak, because he's so much unto you. The question is, my friend, what desirable food are you going to put away so that you can receive from the Lord the favor of God upon your life and upon your family? What desirable food, as Daniel did? 
And are you going to stop praying because there's no answer? Because it could be a possibility that, your ans- that your, the answer to your prayer is held up. But God is desiring something from you which is a physical action, which is a physical thing, and that is to continue to pray and fast and God will help you. Bring, bring my, my stuff over here. The, the, the undesirable first. So I'm living in, in, in modern day Australia. What desirable food are you going to put away? You read, read Daniel chapter 1 and he says, I ate no meat, piece of steak. Yeah? For 21 days. He said, I take in no, no, no sugar and wine. No sugar. Hello. He said, I ate no bread. And I didn't eat that what was desirable. Can I show you something else? In today's world. What's desirable that you're going to put away so that you can hear from the Lord. Because, because here is, here is, here, here, here is something that we love. We love, we love a piece of steak. Anybody eat meat here? We love our steak. We love our bread. We love our coke. We love our wine. And we also love our cell phone. And if this, this cell phone opens up to many things, you used to go home and watch movies, now you can watch it on your phone. Am I right? Am I right? What desirable thing are you going to put away? Come and take this one and bring that one up. Are you, are you with me tonight? Today? What desirable food? And here, here, here is the desirable food. The undesirable And Daniel said, I ate none of that, but all I ate was some Brussels sprout, some spinach, some broccoli. Is this clean? And I drank water, and I ate some cucumber. What desirable food are you going to put away so that you can hear from God? I hope, I hope this is reaching you today. What are you going to bring to the table so that you can hear from God? Is it your, what are you, what is on your mind? What is in front of you? Is it your business? It is your grandchildren. Is it your children? What are the breakthrough that you need? What are the things that are holding you back that you're trying to get away from? Is it those friends that you're trying to break away from and they're so desirable that you have, they have you consumed? We know that God is calling us. We know of different religions that fast. The Buddhists, Islam, Judaism, Hindus, very fast. And Jesus, you know, God sees all of that. God sees the over a billion Muslims that fast and pray. That goes to Mecca. He sees them. But then, he sees another side. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 40 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. God is saying, where are my people? Where are my people? 
I see all these other people are fasting, but he says, where are my people? Are you fasting? Are you praying? Are you seeking the favor of God? Do you need some breakthroughs? Is your family struggling? Are there some inherent things in your family that you need to break away from? Are there some friends that you need to break away from? God is saying, if my people, somebody said, if my people, you got in struggling in your family and you're praying and you says, when am I going to get a breakthrough? When am I going to see a breakthrough? God is said, if my people who are called by my name, somebody said my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will turn, and, and sorry, then I will hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. Church, it's going to take more than just showing up. It's just going to take more than just saying, I'm just going to put away food. You've got to earnestly seek the face of God. Are you with me, church? You, we got to get down and we got to get serious. The church, the church is meant to be, you, you as an individual is meant to be a powerhouse. Are you with me? You're, you're, meant, you're, meant to, you're meant to affect the world. You're meant to change the world. You're meant to change your family. You're meant to pray. You're meant to fast. And when you fast and when you pray, things are going to change around you. Are you ready? So I'm asking you today, what are you going to do in the, come the 30th of this month when we start a fast? Are you going to go through the normal thing where, and, and, and hear me, hear me out today, hear me out today. Fasting, fasting is for us. Don't think God needs it. <laughs> God, God doesn't need us to, to fast so he move. God is already God. But it's for us to understand that he's on our side. Is that he's working on our behalf. And, and so fasting and prayer get us closer to him. So, so remember this, remember this, remember this, that, 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 that those things that are dispatched, those angels, those demonic forces, you, you, you can't just, just say, oh, oh, our father pray and it's over and done with. It's going to take some spiritual action and some physical action to say, Lord, I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to seek your face. Jesus, Jesus, the disciples, they couldn't heal them. They couldn't heal that guy, that, that, that young boy. And, and, and Jesus said, and they asked Jesus, why couldn't we do this? And Jesus says, this cometh by prayer and what? By fasting. So you might go through this 21, 21 days. You might feel like, Oh, how much I, I'm going to eat just one day. God understand. He's, he's looking at the motives. God looks at the what? He looks at, he looks at the motive. What, what is behind this? Are you earnestly seeking me? Are you earnestly seeking my face? Are you obedient to me? Are you obedient to my command? That's what God is looking at. Does it look foolish to you? Does it look foolish to the world? Because certainly this looks foolish to the world that we got to fast and pray to gain the favor of God. Yes, it looks foolish. Yes, it looks foolish. Just go around speaking in tongues, but to God it means something. Yes, it looked foolish to be driving down the highway, speaking in tongues, praying, and waving your hand and saying, glory to God, and you're the only one in the, in the car. Yes, it looks foolish, but God is with us. And when he sees those foolish moves, he acts on our behalf. Oh, 
Oh boy. So I'm, I'm asking, I'm calling the church. Can I say that again? I'm calling the who? I'm calling the church. Because there are clouds, there are dark clouds that sits over you, me, all of us that we need to pray away. And the only way we're going to pray away those dark clouds is through prayer and it's through fasting. It's earnestly seeking the face of God. And church, do I have a church that is ready to pray and ready to fast? Do I have a church that is ready to seek the face of God?